welcome back to Access. I'm Nathan. I'm here with Jonathan from Freestyle Games. We're going to be talking about Guitar Hero Live, which we have just seen. Um, and first of all, can we talk about the new controller? Um, yes. The guitar controller, the buttons have changed, everything's changed. Yeah, so as a game developer, it's a fantastic opportunity to be able to reinvent the Guitar Hero controller. Mm. So we spent a lot of time looking at different prototypes and different button layouts and what, what new we could do. Yeah. And we felt that what your right hand was doing with strumming and the whammy bar, that was pretty good. Mm -hmm. and we didn't necessarily need to change that. We felt what your left hand was doing on the neck of the guitar, that there was an opportunity for us to do something new there. Okay. And what we tried to do was get you a little bit closer to um, the rhythm and movement of a real guitarist. So we have a six button configuration with a row of three buttons along the bottom and three buttons along the top. Yep. And when you're a novice player, you tend to just stick to the to One, two, single three, three buttons. Yeah, but yeah. then as you start to get better and you and you move up, and then you start to make bar chords and split chords. And wow. when you start to move to, you know, to your veteran and, and more, more expert difficulty levels, yeah. then suddenly your hand's dancing around and you're forming all these different patterns of rhythms. Okay. And well, yeah, your hand is moving around in a way that is much more similar to that of a real guitarist. So it's, so it's more authentic, but also, I mean, the guys in, inside were saying that it kind of opens up gameplay a little bit and maybe different genres of music as well. Yes, perhaps. I mean, we've, we've got some genres of music in the game. We've got Skrillex in the game, for example, which is not a um, traditional guitar-based music, but yeah, it's exactly. actually really, really fun to play. So awesome. yeah, we nice. can do that. Uh, and, well, the, and the other thing that we kind of took quite a long time for them to explain to us, just how the game kind of operates now, it seems to me it, uh, Guitar Hero was a huge phenomenon uh, a few years ago and it's come back in a time of kind of social. Social's a huge thing, everyone's online, and the way that we communicate is just different, and the game kind of reflects that. From a top-down perspective, could you kind of explain to us the different ways in which you, you, you can kind of play it? So you get, you get it out of the box and, yep. what, and what happens? Get it out of the box, you've got your new controller. There are two main game modes in the game. The first is GH Live, which is perhaps our more story or campaign mode. So in right. GH Live, what we've tried to do is put you um, looking from the perspective of a major rock star guitarist up on stage in a major music festival. So we've tried to capture that feeling, audiovisual of a festival setting. And the, so, the camera is kind of switched now, right? So you're looking precisely, out. Precisely, yeah. So in the previous generation of games, the camera was down in amongst the audience and you were looking at your CG characters who were on stage. Yeah. Now we've turned the camera around and it's from first person perspective of you on stage. The biggest thing is now it's live action. So we have, okay. have a cast of, of real musicians, real actors who are your bandmates and your tour manager and your groupies and roadies and whoever yeah. who are around you on stage. And we've actually cast um, a cast of hundreds of extras who are your wow. festival crowd and festival Robbie audience festival that disappear goes. out into the, into the distance. And nice. so because we've got real people there, that, that's visceral connection is so much stronger than it ever has been in the past. And so <laughs> now, you know, you're looking at real people alongside you and they're giving you feedback on right. you know, whether you're playing well and oh, the wow. crowd are, you know, they're cheering you on and singing the, the lyrics of the of the chorus right. back to you if you're playing really well. Yeah, if you're yeah. playing really badly, then they're booing <laughs> and jeering and your bandmates are looking at you going, come on, what's wrong with you? Oh, Raise your game. <laughs> um, and they're even throwing things at you if you're, if you're doing really, or the crowd rather, are throwing things at you if you're doing really badly also. Wow, so, and in that mode, that's kind of the progression that people might be familiar with where you play a song, you unlock the song, and then that's, you know. A, a lot of it's unlocked in the very beginning. Some things are locked, but we've tried to keep it really broad. What we're really going for is you're in, you're in the setting of a music festival and you've got lots of different bands that are playing on different stages within that music festival. And so you you can pick from a variety of different ones to begin with. They're not all unlocked, but there's plenty that's available for you to start with. And then as you complete the, the sets, um, and there'll be you know a certain grouping of songs in any particular set, um, then once you've done a few of those, then the whole festival is unlocked. And we have two festivals in awesome. the game. Cool. And, and then... The other side mm. is kind of an, an always-on, more interactive kind of a mode. That's right, yeah. So we looked at the way that people listen to music and how that's changed over the last decade or so. These days, people are used to being able to listen to anything that they want on demand rather than necessarily owning a physical music collection in the way they used to. And so yeah. that in, is in large part inspired GHTV. So it's the first 24-7 playable music video network. And the style of presentation we've gone for is that of a TV channel. So yeah. when I, I there's a button on the guitar, which is your GHTV menu button, and when you press that, you start GHTV, and you land in a channel, the channel that currently happens to be playing on there, and I'm playing whatever song happens to be playing at that time. Yep. And I play and play and play, and I don't know exactly what song is going to come up next, but it will be a song probably of a similar genre of music. So what right. we've actually done is we've, again, much like a TV, station we've tried to curate you know a half hour indie rock show and then there'll be an hour-long metal show and so 
I don't know exactly what song's going to play, but I have an idea of the genre of music, and the hope being that people will discover new new songs that they haven't come across before, new artists they haven't come across it before. It's a way to learn about what styles of music. I mean, that's the thing. I think when you when you get to Guitar Hero and you're kind of like, what song should I play? I'm not sure, and mm. you can just flick this on and something's yeah. kind of pops precisely, up. Precisely, precisely. And then the songs that are being thrown up when you're watching TV, and they're not necessarily songs that you would, you know, I'm going to use the word own. The ones that you can kind of always play, then they're, they're different ones. To that are they? Uh, well, they're so. They're, all of the songs that are in rotation on the channels are also all accessible through an on-demand song list. So at any time, say I've been playing and I've discovered a new song and I haven't played this before and I really want to play it again, yeah, I yeah. could wait for it to come around in the channels again or I could bring up the on-demand song list and I could find it in there and I could play it. And so we have, it's a jukebox style token called a play right. and so one play is equal to one play of a song on demand. So I can go through and I can use up my plays in order to do that. So I think the thing that people are going to need to kind of twig about this is that one thing that people are going to need to understand is, is how the play system works and which songs it applies to. Can you kind of just speak about that a little bit? Certainly. So if I want to play a song on demand, then I use up one of my plays in order to play that song on demand. Um, and one song equals one play. Yeah. Uh, so I can also build up a playlist of songs if I want to. So say, you know, I want to do that one and that one and that one, then I can tee up sort of four or five or six different songs, and then I could spend four or five or six different plays in order to play those ones. So there's that. The other style, also, if you if you don't want to be spending your plays, say it's your favourite song in the world, and you just want to be able to play it as much as you want without having to spend your plays, yeah. you are able to pay some real money in order to add it to your add it to your song cloud or your song library, so, so like you've got permanent access kind to of that. Traditional DLC. Yes, if you are, you know, if you are perhaps more of a collector mindset and you want to, you know, have a music collection in the game, then you can do that. Oh. The other major type of um, new music that we have in the game is in our premium shows. So there was one example which was an exclusive concert by the Black, Black Veil Brides. So yep. those guys were on tour recently and uh, they were filming concert footage and so we have worked with them in order to get early access to, um, well, their new yeah, concert yeah. tour video. Yeah. And so that's the first place that people will be able to, will be able to play that is in our game. We've also announced yesterday um, a partnership with Avenged Sevenfold, and so at launch uh, there will be some exclusive Avenged Sevenfold available in our game. Also, Amazing. now those aren't—they're not purely—you're not purely there picking songs from a menu or picking a show from a menu. There are gameplay challenges attached to these premium shows. So okay. if you want to get in and start playing it, then you will, for example, perhaps have to complete. You know, three different songs with a four-star rating by Black Veil Brides in order to then gain access to the Black Veil Brides premium show to play okay, it. Cool. Or if you're not so much into the gameplay challenge and you just want to play the songs, then you can bypass that entry requirements with some real money in order to play. Cool. There are some prizes that are available to you for winning. So, for example, we have custom highways in the game. So we've got a steampunk highway in yeah, there yeah. And, a, and a skateboard highway, and there's the Panzer's Highway that everyone's yeah, loving yeah, today. That's, that's uh, so, there, awesome. you know, as a player, you have the ability to customize the appearance of your highway in the game. And and as you start to level up and, and you start to um, uh, unlock you know, higher, well, new game modes, there's game modes like Rivals mode, for example, where I can challenge you. If you're my PlayStation friends, uh, then I'm able to challenge you to battle on a particular song and then my highway will show up alongside your highway and we can compete in that way. An important part, actually, to mention is the player progression that's in GHTV. So every yeah. time I'm playing a song, I am on the channels, I'm match made against other players who are playing that same song at that same difficulty kind of, level at the same time. They pop up by your power meter, is that right? Sorry, is they... Still, is it, they, they kind of pop up on the... Yes, the that's right, yes. So we, we have a totem that, that runs along the side like of the a screen. a high score. Yeah, and you're sort of match made against those particular players at that time. Yeah. And so if I win, if I'm the highest ranked player at the end of that song, then I earn a lot of experience points. Sweet. And though they are level up more, if I don't do very well and I finish at the bottom, I'll still earn some experience, but not so much. And, cool. and I've got to say, the last, last thing I want to talk about is... Um, Guitar Hero was always for me a party game and uh, I understand it doesn't have a final name yet but the guys inside were talking about the idea of a party pass Precisely. which I think is an incredible idea Precisely, yeah. and they were right in thinking that that's where you can pay a certain amount of money you just get access yeah. to everything that's right so right. if Again, we have so many different types of player. If you are a party player and you just want to have your friends around, you want to get some pizza in, and you know you just want to be able to play everything that's in the game, yeah. then you can you can do that, and you can buy a party pass, and then you can play anything you want and demand. All of the content that's in the game is is available to you, Amazing. and without you needing to use up your plays or anything else like that for a given period. Because the worst thing is the greyed out song that you want to play on the mm -hmm. menu, and now it's yes. the thing in the past. And that's Amazing. Away. Cool. Well, Great. thanks so much, right. and thank you guys for, for watching. Stick with us during E3. We've got tons more coming up on the channel.